What's going on, everyone? So when I say I am going to talk about Zach Levine every opportunity that I have, I mean it, okay? So we got reports per Anthony Irwin that Zach Levine to the Lakers is a name that continuously kind of keeps being brought up and keeps being linked, that insiders and, and such keep saying like, hey, keep an eye on Zach Levine to the Lakers. Zach Levine uh, is returning from surgery this season, so Lakers and all sides kind of want to like, you know, take their seconds and kind of go, okay, let's make sure Zach Levine is good, make sure Zach Levine's healthy. Um, Anthony Irwin also talked about, you know, names to keep an eye on, all the usual suspects, you know, Kyle Kuzma, Dorian Finney-Smith, Cam Johnson, Bruce Brown, uh, Walker Kessler, right? These guys have been linked to the Lakers all offseason, even dating back to the trade deadline. But Zach Levine is the guy that teams go like, hey, don't be shocked, or that insiders keep saying, like, don't be shocked if Zach Levine ultimately ends up a Laker by the trade deadline, the latest, maybe even sooner. And look, I am Team Levine all the way. I mean, I he's the guy that I want to see the Lakers get. I was big on Zach Levine, even at the trade deadline. I understood why the Lakers didn't make that move, especially with um, the concerns, and then he had to go have surgery. I have yet to hear from anybody, and I said this in a live stream when we were having a little talk and debate, I have yet to hear from anybody basketball reasons why Zach Levine doesn't make sense. Same arguments I always hear over and over again, and I've addressed every time I talk about Zach Levine, is his injury history, right? He's injury prone. Uh, his contract are usually the two main things that people bring up. Every single option that is available right now all played less games than Zach Levine in the last year. Zach Levine minus last year. Last year he played 25 games. I get that. People look at that and go, oh, look. Injury prone. Well, he was also supposed to finish the season until the Detroit rumor started. And then he was like, I'm going to go get surgery. And even like Chicago was like, wait, what? You're going to go do what? Like nobody knew he needed to have surgery. So he goes, that was kind of his way of not going to Detroit. Right? But you look at the previous year. He's played 77 games, played 67 games, played 50 games, played 62 games. Right? The guy's averaging 65 games a season. Right? The last five years, not counting this previous year. That's what every star plays. There's a reason the NBA made the threshold 65 games. Right? People talk about his contract and depth. Contract and depth. That's what I hear. That's the other thing, right? Well, one, his contract, yes, is pretty hefty. Right? But the new TV deal, which we don't know exactly how much it's going to go up, but even if it goes up $5 million, that's the difference between you being under the first apron or over the first apron, right? You also have this guy behind me in LeBron James that can take whatever he wants. He can take a vet. I'm not saying he will, but he could, if he wanted to, just take a vet minimum, right? Like, you know, like he could take $20 million off so you could go get other pieces in the offseason. Also, if you go get Zach Levine, say it's Rui Hachimura, D'Angelo Russell, and Gabe Vincent. You still have Austin Reeves, Zach Levine, Jared Vanderbilt, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis. That's a good enough start of five to win a championship. Then you still have, you got to fix this the point guard spot. That's tough, right? Got to get somebody. Quincy Olivari, Jordan Goodwin, maybe you're taking a Dennis Smith Jr. or whatever, right? But other guys you have, Max Christie, Dalton Connect. You still have Christian Wood. You still have Jackson Hayes. You still have all your picks to go get a Nick Richards or a Walker Kessler or something else. You go get something else if you wanted to, right? So Lakers could still add depth. Look at, like, what other guy makes sense for the Lakers to trade? Like, I see so many people that are like, don't get Zach Levine, go get Jeremy Grant. And it's like, Jeremy Grant plays less games than Zach Levine does. He's more injury prone than Zach Levine. And he's still on a terrible contract. And you're stuck with him. People are like, well, you're stuck with Zach Levine. You're stuck with all these guys. Cam Johnson, even, if you go and trade for him, right? Like, you're stuck with Cam Johnson because the only way that that doesn't work is if he can't play more than 40 games. The most he's ever played in his career in a season is 66 games. Go down the list. Fact check me if you think I'm wrong. Go look at all these options that the Lakers have. They're all injury prone. They're all either on bad contracts. There's a reason these guys are available. And guess what? All those guys were available at the trade deadline. And no one traded for them. And you'd have to trade up assets to get those guys. You know what the difference between Jeremy Grant is and, and Zach Levine right now? Jeremy Grant and Zach Levine, yes, you're stuck with both of them. However, one guy you have two first. The other guy you have none. Right? Like that's what the that's what the threshold is right now. So to me, I'd write, give me the guy that gives us the bigger upside, that gives us the most chance to win a championship. And then also with the contract, if the Lakers win the championship this year because they went and traded for Zach Levine, 
Are you really going to be like, but that contract though, who cares about the championship? Why do we need a championship? Like, the, yeah, we won the championship, but Zach Levine has 40 million next year. Who cares? We win. And we have a chance to retool and potentially win again. And even if we don't win this year with Zach Levine, we're probably not winning this year regardless, right? No matter what the Lakers do, they're going all in one way or another. I'd rather go all in with two first still than go all in and have nothing. Either way has the potential of it not working. Through injuries, through fit, through whatever. Zach Levine gives you the highest ceiling raise. Top of giving you the highest ceiling raise. He also gives you the, the best just like bang for your buck as far as like you get to keep your assets, right? Fit wise, he makes more sense than anybody as far as fit. And he's exactly what we need. An athletic guard that can apply rim pressure and score buckets. He played 25 games last year and still dropped a 50 piece. The guy looks spectacular right now in summer league or in a uh, preseason. And the man has said publicly that he wants to play with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Right? Like no matter what the Lakers do, they're cooked if it doesn't work. You have one chance. I would rather be cooked and it doesn't work with our first to where you can still make other moves or maybe get off of Zach Levine in a year or two when he has a less lesser contract, right? Like there are things here. The only way the the biggest concern that people have is the injuries, right? If he gets hurt, but you could say that about Jeremy Grant. You could say that about Bruce Brown, who just had surgery. You could say that about Cam Johnson, who again has only played 66 games. That's the most he's ever played in a season, right? Like all these guys, but you can get Zach Levine and you can still go get Walker Kessler. You can still go get Nick Richards. Hell, you could get Nick Richards and another piece if you're willing to trade Reeves and Vando. Right? Like, you could go get, literally, you could get Zach Levine. Reeves and Vando would get you another 20 million. Right? Like, so if you wanted to, you could go get, you could, you could actually go get Cam Johnson still technically if you wanted to. Because you still have two first, because he makes what, 23 million? Right? Vando, Max Christie, and uh, you know, like, uh, Jalen Huchifino, if you haven't traded him, basically get you there, right? And then you go get Nick Richards still, right? and then there you go, right? Like, I mean, I'm not saying that all of that would happen, but you'd have the possibility. Why? Because you have two firsts. So you could still go make moves. You could still go do things. You could still revamp this roster if you wanted to, or you get Zach Levine and just be patient. Now, look, Lakers are in their best interest right now to be patient. Lakers are in their best interest right now to wait because, yes, he looks fantastic in preseason. He's balling out. He's doing his thing. But a couple things. One, you want to make sure, like, hey, 20 games in, is he is he still able to, to maintain, right? Is his stamina starting to decrease because, you know, he's coming off injury? Is he is he's dealing with some nagging stuff, right? Like, if he misses, you know, if he plays 10 games and then he misses five, you're, you don't want to make the move. But 20 25 games, 30 games in. Rob Blinka said, you know, 30 games, right? 30 games in, if Zach Levine is looking good and looking spry and looking like a piece we need, then I think that they will make the move, especially if none of the other teams drop their asking price. Because literally everyone, the answer is, we want your two first. We want your two first. Jeremy Grant isn't worth two. Portland insiders, literally people that are on Portland's side have said in uh, interviews and have said in their reports that like, Portland is being insane right now, right? Like, Lakers are willing to take that terrible contract. Just give it to them, right? Like, that's Portland people saying that. Like, what are we doing? Just give him to the Lakers. But no, they, they want two first. Cam Johnson, we want two first. All these guys are going to cost an arm and a leg. Why would we go and sell the farm for guys that don't make by themselves? Now, if you can get a Jeremy Grant like a Bruce Brown, then yes, that raises the ceiling. Like, if we can get two guys, then yes, right? But Zach Levine's the singular player that gives us the best chance at a championship. Going and getting Jeremy Grant makes us better. Doesn't make us championship potential better. It makes us better. All right, Cam Johnson makes us better. Bruce Brown makes us better, right? Now, if you get Bruce Brown and a Jeremy Grant, then yes. You get a Bruce Brown and a Cam Johnson, yes. Add in a Nick Richards, boom, let's go win a championship. Or a Walker Kessler, boom, go win a championship. But Zach Levine, by himself, I believe, boom, makes this a contender. And then add in a Nick Richards, boom, let's go get a championship. Or add in a Walker Kessler, boom, let's go get a championship. Right? Like, it's fine. You're good. 
right? Like you're still going to have your nine to 10 guys in the rotation. Your rotation's still going to be fine. You're going to be better, more athletic, more versatile. You're not going to have to worry come playoffs about, you know, Zach Levine, even on a bad night, is going to give you a 15, where D'Lo on a bad night gives you a goose egg. Austin Reeves could give you like five or seven on a bad night. He shot 28% from three in the in the playoffs this last go around. Rui Hachimura completely disappeared. I like those guys, right? I do. But none of those guys are better than Zach Levine. And really, if you boil it down, right, you, Gabe Vincent, we didn't even have last year. And, you know, how much, like, I like Gabe Vincent, but how much of an impact does he actually make? Like, is Gabe, healthy Gabe Vincent the difference between us winning a championship or not? No. Does it make us better? Yes. It makes us better. Again, just like Jeremy Grant would make us better. But Gabe Vincent makes us better. However, Gabe Vincent isn't like this, like, oh, man, if we get rid of Gabe Vincent, that's it. Lakers are cooked. So, really, it's Zach Levine for Rui Hachimura and D'Angelo Russell. Who would you rather have, Rui and D'Lo or Zach Levine? Remove, remove the injuries, remove the contracts, remove all of it. Just talk about D'Lo and Rui and what they've done during the regular season as well as the playoffs and Zach Levine. And tell me you'd rather have D'Lo and Rui over Zach Levine because I wouldn't. Not with Austin Reeves, not with all these other things. Zach Levine's going to give you the same production that those two guys give you. And on top of that, they give he solves a need that you have, clears up redundancies, keeps all your assets. Like, you look, start looking at the pros and cons of D'Lo and Rui versus Zach Levine. And tell me that it doesn't just start going like this. I, I, I just, I don't understand why people are, like, don't want Zach Levine. Like, it just, it makes too much sense. And, again, I have yet to hear a compelling argument. I'd love to hear it. If somebody has a real compelling argument as to why we shouldn't get Zach Levine, because it won't work. No, remove the remove the injury history because again he played 77 games 67 games before last season so as long as he's playing 65 games fine that's good right I you know I've heard you know the, the depth issue I just answered it right you're, you're losing basically two guys really in your starting unit and one guy in your rotation that you didn't even have all year last year so you're not losing anything right and you'd still be eight to nine guys deep and you still have assets to go to other things depth isn't the problem oh the finance his contract lebron james can solve that by himself not counting whatever the c the the new tv deals increase the cap then lakers will be fine right like the the only argument there would be would be on the basketball court Everyone knows. You know why no one's gave me a compelling argument about the basketball court? Because everybody knows. Even if you're not on board with Zach Levine, you know. Like, man, Zach Levine is really good. Would fit alongside LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Chef kiss. Seamlessly. One of the best catch-and-shoot three-point shooters in the league. A guy that can be a dynamic closer. Be a dynamic scorer. All of it. Right? Like, it makes too much sense. But... Anyway, as always, this is a discussion, and I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? I do you agree with my points? Do you disagree with my points? You kind of mixed in the middle with my points. Um, again, whatever your thoughts are, love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.